Uh, we are continuing with our third speaker in this, well, well actually in another block. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are now uh, moving to the general theme of language modeling. And uh, Eniko Heya will be presenting <laughs> um, an unsupervised approach to characterize the adjectival microstructure in a Hungarian monolingual explanatory dictionary. Yeah, that's it. thank you very much. So uh, our presentation uh, lies at the other end as the previous presentations, because it concerns how we uh, extracted meanings for a future Hungarian monolingual explanatory dictionary. Basically, this is a joint research uh, with our colleagues, Noemi Ligeti Nagy, uh, László Simon and Veronika Lip. And it's quite important to note that this is a joint research with regard uh, to the research groups, uh, because there are also language technology uh, experts and uh, lexicographers. Yes. So the structure of the presentation is as follows. At first, I would like to uh, uh, list the um, our motivation, then shortly introduce the problem, which uh, we think is quite uh, omnipresent in uh, lexicography, that is when to tell apart meanings, uh, which is especially important in the case of polysemies. Then I will uh, outline the solution, which is uh, basically uh, giving distributional criteria for meaning distinction. Then we are going to the technical part, uh, that is how to model uh, these meaning distinctions uh, concerning the representation of adjectives, uh, the representation of adjectival meanings, and finally the representation of polysemies. Uh, we will also detect uh, nouns, uh, salient nominal context inducing uh, the relevant meanings. Uh, I will shortly describe the method, and finally the conclusion and future work uh, will uh, come. So the Basic motivation is that the Hungarian Research Center for Linguistics just uh, has recently launched a project which aims to update uh, the new version, uh, aims to create the new version of the uh, explanatory dictionary of the Hungarian language, which was originally created uh, in the beginning of the 1960s. And as was usual at that age, it's uh, completely based uh, on lexicograph lexicographer's intuition. So, the main methodological issue uh, in this new version is uh, how to obtain an objective lexical profile for each uh, dictionary entry. Uh, I think it's quite obvious uh, now that uh, we should apply corpus-based or corpus-driven methods. Uh, that is, we should rely on a huge amount of textual, textual data. And in this presentation and also in this thread of research, we are concentrating in adjectives, uh, especially on adjectives in attributive positions. Uh, they are hold to be quite difficult to divide into distinct senses, uh, and they are also rather overlooked uh, in the lexical semantic literature. Uh, that is, now we are uh, introducing an unsupervised word sense uh, induction uh, method uh, which uh, relies on uh, a substantial amount uh, of unlabeled unlab data, which is quite good because uh, now we have only minimal uh, presuppositions about uh, senses and subsenses. So, uh, the corpus film technique provides us with a more objective conception of polysemic meaning distinctions. Uh, the most important contribution of this uh, presentation, it thinks that uh, these distributional criteria uh, to tell apart substances, I think, and uh, the adjectival meanings are distinct, distilled from corpus data along with uh, the nominal context as well. The proposed methodology uh, can be easily modeled uh, by a graph-based approach, and according to our expectation, uh, the collaboration between lexicographers and NLP researchers will result in an improved uh, word sense induction methodology and the development of data-oriented explicit lexicographic uh, editing principles uh, that apply to both the microstructure and microstructure of the dictionary. So, now the problem, when to tell apart meanings in the case of polysemy. 
So, what is polysemy? Uh, according, for example, uh, Elizabeth Tejezek, uh, 2016, uh, polysemy uh, is when there are multiple meanings that are somehow related to each other. It's not a very firm definition, I think everybody sees. So at first, let's see what is a meaning. Uh, in our approach, we confined ourselves to a word-based approach. That is, uh, we suppose that meanings are constituted by sets of synonyms, so-called synsets in the word nets. And words with multiple meanings belong to multiple synsets. But unfortunately, as probably all of you know, synonymy is a very strict uh, notion if you want to define that distributionally. That is, if you... Uh, uh, accept the definition that two expressions are synonyms if they are interchangeable in every context, preserving the ori original meaning, which nearly uh, never applies in real-life situations. So that's why we introduced the relaxed version of synonymy, which we called near synonymy, and we said that uh, two expressions are near synonyms, if they are interchangeable in a restricted set of contexts. So instead of every context, we confine ourselves to a restricted set of contexts. Here is an example, the Hungarian counterparts of the English adjectives uh, fine and soft are synonyms before uh, nouns belonging to a restricted uh, semantic field related to music. So for example, lágy zene, soft music, or fine music, uh, finom zene, means uh, has the, have the same meanings, as opposed to, for example, bread, like uh, fine bread and soft bread have different meanings. So we considered an adjective uh, to have multiple meanings if they belong to multiple near synonymic classes. So now, uh, the distributional criteria for meaning distinction. Uh, first, there is at least one near synonym for each sense of the adjective. Second, there is a set of context nouns that form grammatical constructions, uh, both with the original adjective and with the near synonym. Third, the two sets of context nouns that characterize the different senses are non-overlapping. And finally, the non-overlapping set of nouns forms a semantic category reflecting uh, the subselectional properties of the adjectives in the sense of Pustajowski, for example. So here's an example. Uh, these are automatically extracted senses from corpora. So we have the Hungarian adjective sunny. And uh, we found that it has two senses. Uh, one is referring to sunshiny, napsütéses, and the other referring to szállít, napsütötte. We also found that there are different and non-overlapping nominal contexts. Uh, the context nouns in the first sense are referring to uh, time expressions, that is uh, Sunday and day. And the context nouns uh, in, for, for the second sense like uh, area, island, uh, side, and terrace are referring to places. So we have two semantic fields with different uh, nouns. Okay, how did we do these automatic uh, extractions? First, uh, we prepared a representation of adjectives. It's quite uh, usual or even obsolete, I would say. Uh, these are static word embeddings, uh, word to vec. These are the technical parameters. I will skip, skip them now here. And uh, <clears throat> as probably all of you know, there are certain advantages. That is, they are quite easy to train and handle. But unfortunately, there is the quite famous meaning conflation deficiency. Accordingly, uh, based on word to vec representation, we are not able to discriminate among different uh, senses of a word. So for that problem, a solution is needed. And the quite ob uh, obvious solution is uh, converting these word to, vac word to vac embeddings into graphs. So I will show you that uh, in what follows. And here, uh, nodes uh, are representing adjectives and the edges of the graph are representing semantic similarities. So here is an automatically generated graph which you probably don't understand, but <laughs> now, yes. So the central adjective of, the, of this graph now is the Hungarian 
adjective érzékeny, szenzitív, and you can see that there are uh, more densely connected and less uh, densely connected supports of this graph. And according to our hypothesis, the more densely connected parts are referring to sub, sub meanings of this uh, adjective érzékeny. So, for example, in the lower part of the figure, you can see that uh, there are adjectives like prone to, receptive, and also uh, antonyms like oversensitive, immune or insensitive, referring to one meaning. And the upper part of the figure, there are another subsense, uh, which is susceptible, vulnerable, and fragile. So, uh, densely connected is again something which is a little bit uh, slimy. So, we have to be a little bit stricter. And that's why we have decided to rely on cliques, which are quite uh, well-defined notions uh, notion in mathematics. Clicks are maximally uh, connected subgraphs. Uh, here is an illustration of a click where every pair of nodes is connected. So the meaning of each element is similar to that of every other element. And that's why we think that clicks are modeling near synonymy classes representing a, subsess, uh, a substance of an adjective. So now we are there that we can model uh, adjective or polysemy. Uh, accordingly, an adjective has multiple senses if it belongs to multiple cliques uh, representing various near synonymy classes. Here is an, again an, uh, an example. Uh, the central adjective now is objective, tárgyilagos. And as you can see, it belongs to multiple cliques. Uh, one click uh, comprises adjectives like uh, concise and factual and the other clique uh, comprises uh, adjectives like impartial and unbiased, uh, referring to two different senses. Uh, maybe you can recall that there were uh, three additional uh, criteria as well concerning the nominal context. So there are these three criteria. The, we need a set of uh, non-overlapping nouns that form uh, semantic classes for uh, all the cliques we induced uh, automatically. Uh, so the next task is to detect the salient nominal context. Here is an, another example. Uh, here is the Hungarian adjective Mindennapi, which can be translated as common with two meanings. Uh, one meaning uh, refers to common or ordinary, while the other meaning uh, refers to everyday. And we found that uh, words uh, related to language or to uh, such as word usage, language use, or to science like reality science or way of thinking are inducing the first sense, while uh, activities, regular activities like practice and exercise are inducing the second sense. Uh, it's important to note that these uh, nominal contexts were extracted fully automatically as well by uh, using a hierarchic agglomerative uh, clustering method. So the input of this uh, clustering algorithm was also the word to vec representation of the nouns. And here you can... Okay, thank you. Okay, so and uh, as you can see, uh, here are these. Uh, okay, I don't know. Here, here, here are the, the the branches which are closer to the terminals, are uh, referring to these quite well defined tight semantic classes. Okay, uh, and now. Uh, I was, I was talking about the uh, my microstructure of the dictionaries and now some words about the macrostructure. As a side effect of this uh, graph-based method, we found it was quite unexpected that connected components are also very useful because in the graph, they are strictly corresponded to non-overlapping semantically coherent components. A connected graph component is a subset of network nodes such that there is a pass from each node in the subset to any other node in the same subset. 
So the adjective or graph components keep the various semantic domains separate, also reveal the relations between the inner node adjectives, providing information on polysemies and meaning shifts. And obviously clicks emerge as part of these uh, connected components. And now just I want to uh, show you some numbers without a real evaluation. The original adjective graph uh, consisted slightly more than 10,000 adjectives. So this method, uh, I hope is quite robust, which was dissected into slightly less than 2,000 components. And uh, as a result, we had a partition over 6,500 uh, 6, adjectives, where each component corresponded to a well-defined semantic domain. And unfortunately, we always had a giant uh, component, which will probably require a further processing step. So this is an example of our connected component. You can see, for example, here, I just started out from the uh, adjectives, uh, idiot mode, outdated in English. And if you, you can proceed in three directions, the one is uh, uh, obsolete, the other one is shabby, and the third one in anachronistic. And for example, if you proceed further in the di direction of anachronistic, you arrive finally to pseudoscientific, which is not closely related, but still belongs to this uh, semantic domain. So some words about the method. Uh, two main steps were applied. First, the weighted, uh, first, a weighted and directed graph was generated based on the word to vec representation I told you about, where the nodes of the graph re represent the adjectives, the edges uh, represent the semantic similarities, the edge weights were calculated on the basis of the usual cosine similarity, which is a, a symmetric, symmetric measure, that's why uh, our graph is undirected. And the second step was the binarization step, when the weighted graph was cut uh, via a K cutoff parameter, and we kept all the edges that were higher than this K cutoff value, and all the other edges were cancelled. So, uh, in the third step, after clicks were searched for, representing polysemies, and connected components were also searched for, representing semantic domains. Here are two versions of the same adjective érzékeny. The left one is, the, is a, with a lower K cutoff value. It's a more densely connective graph with a much richer uh, microstructure, while the, the, the right one is a, a graph with a higher cutoff value. Okay, we also tested four lexicographic hypotheses. Uh, first, the, the induced clicks can help lexicographers to set up the adject adjective or microstructure. The detailed analysis of the agographs of uh, 20 frequent adjectives slides at K0.7 uh, showed that in eight cases the corresponding clicks comprised relevant adjectives, not in the explanatory dictionary. For example, the headword uh, astonishing uh, lacked the substance uh, gut wrenching in the dictionary, was, but was retrieved automatically with this method. Then the automatically extracted nominal clusters depicted by the dendrograms provide lexicographers with additional contextual data to further characterize the existing adjective or microstructure in the dictionary. It has been proved to be completely correct on the basis of randomly selected dendrograms which was not very surprising due to the fact that the nodes in the dendrogram, in the binary trees I showed you, uh, near the terminals, quite strictly correspond to coherent tight semantic classes. The third hypothesis which we tested was that the nominal clusters characterizing the adjective or microstructure indicate on their own where meaning distinctions have to be made without rel relying on any previously given definition it has been proved to be only partially correct. Uh, only dendrogram, dendrogram nodes near the terminals uh, indicate these proper uh, meaning distinctions, but we think that an additional filtering on validating nouns may be in order here because we considered all the nouns win, without any uh, fre frequency restriction. Uh, here is an example that I will skip. 
and force the automatically extracted connected components help to detect missing headwords, thus complementing the existing uh, microstructure. Uh, the comparison of the explanatory dictionary and the automatically retrieved semantic related adjectives extracted via the connected graph components was rather conclusive. For instance, the graph based algorithm catalogued 90 adjectives referring to quantities on the basis of the training corpus, out of which only eight was listed in the dictionary. So I uh, wanted to present you uh, unsupervised uh, graph based methodology, which helped us to characterize both the uh, adjective of micro and microstructure in the dictionaries. It turned out that a tighter collaboration with lexicographers is needed because uh, their uh, perspective is quite important at uh, setting the right parameters. And thank you. Thank you very much. Um, also for handling the blackout, uh, the unexpected blackout yeah. in the presentation. Um, it's now time for questions. Uh, who has a question? Mm -hmm. Is this software is freely available, or do you plan to? Uh... We plan. We okay. plan, but it's Not a long. Yet. Not yet. Okay. It's a long Thank way you. to go. Thank you. More questions? Yes? <laughs> I just wanted to add that uh, I think this method is brilliant because it highlighted some uh, very s s real uh, inconsistency in the that uh, monolingual dictionary. And now it's time for, to, for correction. So we are working on it. And thank you, Annika. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we have any questions online? Nothing? We have time for one more. No? Then I will just ask a question, and it's a very uh, linguist question, and I apologize for that, but uh, you were mentioning a little bit now at the end that your future work is, I mean, that you realize that you want to uh, work closely with uh, lexicographers to adjust the parameters for your mm -hmm. methodology. Can you maybe elaborate on that, on um, what insight exactly from the lexicographic part uh, made it easier or made it like... Um, helped you improve the methods or is this something that you're still working I on? I think we have some clues about that, but uh, Veronica, Lee, uh -huh. okay. uh, she was working on that. Maybe uh, she knows better, uh, but I will. So it was quite interesting that these uh, connected components were revealing uh, so strict semantic classes that actually uh, could be listed in the uh, editing principles of the dictionaries and weren't there. So morphologically, that mor morphologically regulated tight semantic classes, not even semantically regulated. I don't know whether it was an answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you as well. We do have time for one more question, but if you are insisting, then we will slowly wrap up this talk. Uh, thank, let's thank the presenter again. For, thank you.